Tatiana. I've been waist training for the last four years, actually I think five years now. And so I've learned a thing or two about waist training and I want to share with you all of my best tips for those of you who are just getting started because when you just order a waist trainer online, you don't really know much about like all of the rules and the things that you should know about waist training. And so I want to save you all the time that it's taken me to learn all this stuff by giving you this video. So if you're just getting started, you're new to waist training, maybe you haven't even gotten a waist trainer yet, then keep watching. I'm going to give you about 11 tips for beginners who are just getting started. So first of all, um, a waist trainer is different than a corset. Both of them are going to shape your body, but they work differently. A waist trainer such as this, you know, right here, they're very pliable, so they're very flexible. They don't have the same structure as a corset. The bones are called flexi steel bones, and with corsets, they're steel bones, so they're much more structured. And because of that, waist training is fairly safe. Anything can be taken to an extreme, but waist training is, you know, it's not going to shift your bones. It just doesn't have the strength to sh move your bones and your organs. So all it's really going to do is it's going to mold your fat. So right now it's dispersing my fat from here to up here to down here. And um, people always wonder, well, are waist training results permanent? And the answer is <laughs> yes and no, they're semi-permanent. So if you achieve an hourglass figure through waist training because you've been wearing it consistently, you can keep that figure, but you'll have to waist train every once in a while. You don't have to waist train every day, but you are going to have to waist train once, maybe once a week in order to maintain that shape because it's not permanent. Your fat is not permanently displaced. It's temporarily displaced. And so when you're wearing a waist trainer, it trains your body to be in that shape. It's like a sculptor who's sculpting clay. And uh, when you don't wear the waist trainer for a few weeks or a few months, your body will go back to the shape that it was. So that's just kind of how it works. Um, and of course, if you have any kind of medical conditions, it's really important to get doctor's approval. If you have back issues, anything like, you know, it's better safe than sorry. Again, these are two different waist trainers here. Um, this is the Black Paisley. These are Lux Curves waist trainers. And you can see here that um, waist trainers come in a few different um, torso lengths. So what is a torso length? So this is a waist trainer. It goes from right here under my bust down to my pelvis area. So it's not, so it's right this area right here, right? The idea is to target the waistline. Um, but it does come in different torso lengths. So you can see here this one goes from here down to here. So it's a lot longer than this one. And so the reason being is that, you know, everyone's body is a different shape and size. We're not all made the same, of course. Um, so it's important to have sizing variations. So these waist trainers come from a size three extra small to four extra large. But in addition to, you know, the, the, the width of the waist trainer, the length also has to come in a variety of sizes because we all have different torso lengths. And just because you're petite like me doesn't necessarily mean that you have a short torso. And just because you're tall doesn't necessarily mean that you have a long torso. So um, the Lux Curves waist trainers come in three different torso lengths, short torso, medium torso, and long torso. This is a short torso. This is a medium torso. I'll put the link down below for the information about the torso lengths. So just be aware that sizing is important because if you get a waist trainer that doesn't fit you, um, not only will you not see results, it's just like not going to be comfortable. You're not going to want to wear it. So sizing is really important. And, and how do you know that a waist trainer fits you? Well, one way to know is that you should measure your waistline before you put the waist trainer on. So get a flexible measuring tape and figure out what your measurement is. And after you put the waist trainer on, that measurement should be about one inch smaller. So your waistline should be smaller when you're wearing the waist trainer than when you're not wearing the waist trainer, not bigger. If your waistline is bigger, then that means that the waist trainer is adding bulk. That means that it's not tight enough to shrink and mold your body. So it needs to be tight. That's the thing with waist training is that if it's not tight, it's not going to work. And initially when you first get it, it's going to be really hard to put on because they stretch with time. They mold to your body shape. 
Um, so in the beginning, it's really hard because it has not learned your body shape yet. But once you put it on, you finally get it on. Maybe you need the help of your friends <laughs> to put it on, lay on the couch and get it on when you're laying down. But once you finally get it on, wear it for a couple of hours. And then with time, you'll notice that tomorrow morning, it'll be a lot easier to get on. And then the day after, even easier. And then within one week, it's like a piece of cake to get on because now the, the waist trainer has molded to your body shape. So that's really what happens. Um, so yeah, sizing is really important. Um, know that it's gonna be really hard to get on the first time. If it's easy to get on, it's just probably not gonna work that well. Um, the Lux Curves waist trainers, sometimes people think that they get the waist trainer and they're like, oh, it's too small for me, I'm gonna return it for a bigger size. But oftentimes, it's actually the right size. It is supposed to be really tight. So this is just like my warning to you that when you first get it, it might feel like it's too small, but just give it another try. If you have questions, contact the Lux Curve support and uh, we can help you to decide like whether or not it is the right size. You make sure that you wear a thin tank top underneath. So I wasn't wearing anything underneath this waist trainer just because I wanted to make sure, I don't know why, but I wasn't. <laughs> but usually I recommend to get a cotton tank top, like a really thin spaghetti strap tank top or a tube top to wear underneath your waist trainer because although the materials are really comfortable, there's three layers of materials here. There's cotton, there's spandex, there's latex. It's still uh, better to wear a tank top underneath because you wanna have a barrier between your skin and the waist trainer. And the reason that you want to have this barrier is for a few reasons. Number one is because it's going to protect the waist trainer. So it's going to allow you to wash it less frequently because as you sweat throughout the day, it's going to get on your tank top and not on your waist trainer, or at least not as much on your waist trainer. And so you can avoid overwashing your waist trainer because if you wash it every day, it's not like, it's not like your socks, you know, they're not, they don't have that much, you know, it, it's a diff, a whole different, um, it's a whole different piece of garment. It's not the same. So you don't want to overwash it. And then also, if you wear a tank top, that's going to protect your skin. So sometimes people have, they, when the waist trainer is having friction with your skin, so if you're moving around throughout the day, bending, you know, living a normal life, there's going to be friction, and that friction might cause skin irritations, might cause acne, you know, if you're sweating, and then the waist trainers touching your skin, you might get acne. So it's just better to wear a tank top underneath. It's just more comfortable for you. You don't have to, sometimes I don't, but for the most part, especially if I'm gonna, if I know I'm gonna be sweating and wearing it for a long time, I will wear a tank top. And I like to get the organic tank tops. You can get them on Amazon because you know you won't have an allergic reaction to 100% organic tank tops. But um, you can also get tank tops from Forever 21. They have the spaghetti strap tank tops for like $2 each. So that's an option as well. Tip number four is to make sure you know how many hours you should wear the waist trainer when you first get it. So when you first get your waist trainer in the mail, the day one, you wanna wear it for only two hours. And in fact, if you get your waist trainer in the mail and it's nighttime, I would not even bother putting it on yet. Wait until the next day because you wanna put your waist trainer on for the first time, first thing in the morning. And the reason being is because first thing in the morning, your stomach is gonna be flat. <laughs> I don't really know why that happens, but I'm sure you get this. Like you wake up in the morning, you're like, hmm, this is nice. It's like flat. But at the end of the day, you eat so much food, it gets bloated and it's like bigger, right? So first thing in the morning, your stomach's gonna be flatter, you know, before you eat something and um, after you go to the bathroom. And so it's gonna be easier to get the waist trainer on. So especially if you're just getting the waist trainer fresh, new in the mail for the first time, wait until the morning to put it on because if you put it on nighttime, it's gonna be double hard. It's already hard to get on for the first time, but if you try it at nighttime, it's gonna be extra hard because your waist is gonna be bigger. The first day that you get it, wear it for a maximum of two hours. So like I said, it's gonna be a challenge maybe the first day you might feel uncomfortable you might feel like you know you've never worn something around your waist for that long so it might feel strange and just not normal <laughs> so two hours maximum um, let your body adapt to it I'm a huge 
um, fan of just like really listening to my body, tuning into my body, um, trying to really not exaggerate anything, you know, like if I know it's enough, then it's enough and not pushing my body past its limits. So day number two, you can wear it up to four hours if you feel comfortable. If you aren't comfortable going to the four hours, just stay at two hours. And then each day you can increase it by two hours and up to eight hours. So a maximum amount of time that you want to wear the waist trainer in a full day is eight hours. So as I said before, like, did I say this? Anything can be taken to an extreme, right? Almost anything can. And as waist training is safe, there is a way to take it to an extreme. And that's by wearing it, you know, more than eight hours a day. There's people who wear it 24 hours a day and that's just not healthy. And the reason it's not healthy is because if you're wearing something around your waist, any part of your body for 24 hours, every single day, seven days a week, then your body starts to depend on this thing. And you don't want your body to depend on the waist trainer. If your body starts to depend on the waist trainer, then your spine and your ribs, they're gonna weaken because they are now dependent on the extra support that the waist trainer is providing. So you don't have to worry about this if you don't exaggerate and don't go to an extreme with it. So up to eight hours a day is fine. And then also I wanna mention that you should not have any pain. Waist training should never be painful. If it's ever painful, take it off right away. Something's wrong. Maybe Maybe there's like a bone that's poking out and sticking into you. Maybe it's too tight. Who knows? God knows what. It should never be painful. In fact, it should be the opposite. Waist training should be like a very comfortable experience. You know, I'm wearing my waist trainer right now and although it looks like, you know, it's tight, yes it is tight, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It feels like like someone or something is hugging my waistline. It feels like a bear hug. It just, it feels good. Like it feels comforting in a way. And especially for us women, you know, if you have compression in the womb area, um, it, it gives you a sense of comfort, which is really nice. Um, and so if you're even on your period, yes, you can waist train on your period. And it, for some people, it actually helps with period cramps because the compression helps um, the, the womb area. But it's up to you. I don't waist train on my period, but I know a lot of women who do. So yeah, so just make sure that it's never painful. If it ever is, take it off. Don't try and tough through it. There's no reason for it to be painful. So just keep that in mind. And yes, the first week that you wear a waist trainer, it's gonna be you know, strange and it's gonna feel different. And you might even have sore spots in your rib area just because like you've never had compression here before, but that goes away. If that's persisting for weeks or months, there's definitely something wrong. And you might wanna speak to your doctor at that point because who knows what is going on in your body. Maybe you have, um, you know, like something else in there. And so you just wanna be safe. So there should be no pain. It should be a comfortable experience. So I decided to break this video up into two parts for the sake of time. So if you wanna learn five more waist training tips for beginners, you can click somewhere here for part two of this video. I do encourage that you continue watching because these are five more tips that are really gonna help you throughout your waist training journey and just help you get the most out of this experience. And I would like to invite you to our Facebook community. So if you are looking to start waist training, you know, even if you don't have your waist trainer yet, feel free to join our community of over 15,000 Lux dolls, all women, real people like you and I, um, who are waist training and they're seeing amazing results. And so you can hop on in there, you can see their before and after pictures, you can chat with each other, and it's just like a great place to find your tribe. So I'll link the group in the description box below, or you can just go to your Facebook page and type in, in the search box, Lux Curves Waist Training Dolls. You do have to apply to get into the group because it is a private group, and that's because your privacy is important to us, and you know, because it's a private group, any posts that you make in the group aren't gonna be visible to your Facebook friends, <laughs> because I know that we don't always wanna show our Facebook friends our before photos and you know photos of our, our bodies and stuff, so it's all hidden, it's just within the community. So feel free to join that. And also, if you're interested in trying out a Lux Curves Waist Trainer, um, there's a 10% off discount code in the description box below. Just go to luxcurves.com waste and you can get your code there. I'd love for you to give it a try.